This episode of The Dog Show features Steve Ball. Steve is the CEO of Zesty Paws, a premium supplements brand for pets that is driven by quality, innovation, and a passion for pet health and wellness. They live by their motto to keep your bestie feeling zesty. In the interview, we discuss all things CBD for dogs, including what it does, the questions you should ask before using it, and some examples of CBD products. Steve, Steve from Zesty Paws, thanks so much for coming on the dog show today. Yeah, thanks, Will. Great to be here and excited to talk to you. Yeah, I'm mean, really excited to, to have a chat today. We're going to be talking a lot about supplements for dogs um, and, and other pets, of course, which is a, an interesting topic, um, which I'm a little bit unfamiliar with, so I'm really excited to dive deep into that. But before we get into all that serious stuff, I'd like to hear a bit more about your history with dogs. So you've got a dog of your yeah. own, I believe? Yeah, I've always grown up with dogs, had dogs. Our current My current dog is uh, Storm. She's a uh, almost five-year-old English Golden and just fantastic. Uh, I've got young kids, family dog, and um, couldn't ask for a better dog, to be honest. She's just great. Yeah, so with Storm, um, did you get her as a, a puppy or as a rescue or how did that work? Yeah, we did get her as a puppy. We wanted that experience with the kids um, to kind of have the puppy around the house and all that. And um, she's just been fantastic growing up with them and um, just so well behaved and, you know, gives teaches the kids some responsibility as well. Yeah, I feel like that would probably give you peace of mind if you've got young children, um, you know, having the puppy from an early age so you can kind of train them yourself and, and get them used to each other and all that kind of stuff, right? Yeah, exactly. You know, I'm a stickler for the training, definitely trainer. The good news is the, you know, Goldens, English Goldens are highly trainable. So it wasn't yeah. really a ton of work. Um, and then the fact that my youngest is, is one that really, uh, young boy and just loves to, uh, you know, treats her as his best friend, but also, uh, just like a lot of little boys will do is pretty aggressive with her hmm. <laughs> and she is just the most patient creature in the world. So, um, we're lucky and fortunate in that regard, but, uh, yeah, she's, she's amazing. So the English golden sounds like is a great family dog then for, for young children as well. It is. It is. It's fantastic. I think all Goldens in general are, mm. are great family dogs. And then the, the English Golden, we just love the love the coloring of her. And, and they're a little bit smaller than their American Golden counterparts, but uh, every bit of Golden, that's for sure. Is there anything about that particular type of Golden or just Goldens in general, which you know people wouldn't know about that hadn't had, had one before that you could share? Gosh, I mean, if you've been around a gold, I mean, there's such a popular dog here in, in the U.S., you know, around the world, I honestly don't know, but in the U.S., they're, they're all over. Um, so most people here know, but at the end of the day, it's, you know, they're just uh, very, very loyal. Uh, I would say that probably the biggest surprise for me, because I didn't grow up with Goldens, I grew up mm. in English Shutter. And the biggest surprise for me is that they're such a loyal dog. They knew their people around at all times that literally, if you step away from them for a little bit, they literally give you the sad face. I mean, they do not like to be alone. Um, and that's just probably the, the hardest thing is if the kids are away at school, I'm away at work, and knowing my wife's not around, I mean, literally you come home and she's you feel like she's been giving the sad face all day. So yeah. that's the thing is, I mean, the, the, the benefit of that is ultimately massively great companion animals to be mm -hmm. around you, be next to you. Um, but you better be willing to give them attention because if you don't, you're going to get the sad face a lot. <laughs> That's right. I'm, I'm pretty sure there's a, there's a lot of dog breeds out there that um, require a lot of that type of attention there, and they're willing to give yes. that face as well when they're left alone. So, um, Yeah, it's like they, the amount of attention they they give is, is an equal part to what they need. That's what I think people have to know is, is they're going to give a lot of attention. They're going to give a lot of affection and a lot of love, but that pretty much goes both ways. They're going to need that from you as well. So... Um, yeah, I think it's one of those those uh, breeds that if you're going to be out, you're going to be away a lot, not at home. I don't think it's probably the best breed. I think you need to really make sure you're spending uh, you know, ample time with with him or her, so that you're you're giving that affection as well. Yeah, and I think I've I've had a few trainers on the show to discuss like behavioral issues and things like that before, and one of the common themes that's come through those conversations is um, that stimulation is so important for especially for an active dog breed that, that Goldens are um, and like one that, you know, potentially doesn't like being separated from their owners. 
Um, yes. You know, that stimulation, day-to-day stimulation is so important to, to kind of um, reduce behavioral problems as well. Yeah, I think so. I think the other aspect is uh, for those who have not had Goldens but are considering it, um, be prepared to consider getting him or her a buddy. So we're, we're because my kids are in school and they're in full time, we're now considering, uh, you know, we're thinking about getting a second dog just to have a buddy uh, yeah. for Storm. Um, so you just kind of want to make sure of that, but uh, she's great. Yeah, I've got one dog myself and I've, we've, we've often flirted with the idea of getting a buddy because it's like, I mean, I'm sure it'd just be, I mean, there's, there's obviously the great side of it, which is like the companionship and they play together and they, you know, they keep each other occupied. I guess um, the thing that's always stopped us is probably the financial aspect or, you know, it's just like, it, it seems like it's going to be a lot of work having an extra dog around yes. as well. Yes. Um, that's the same with us. It's just, just the extra amount of work, but yeah, I think it's going to pay off in the, in the friendship. Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks for sharing so much about your history with dogs. Yeah. It sounds like you've got, um, you're a dog lover like myself. So I uh, appreciate you sharing those things. Yeah. How did you end up getting into the pet well-being and supplements industry? What did that look like? Yeah, good, great question. So I've been in the industry for 10 years now. So about 10 years ago, um, I started a all-natural pet food treat and supplements company. So um, how I got into it was um, you know, a little bit interesting. I, I was um, out in Colorado and talking with some like-minded individuals about um, different ways to bring better for you products to the market. And we really felt that Whole Foods, which is a large natural grocery store, you know, chain here in the U S that ultimately we could go to Whole Foods and we could get everything that was the best quality food for our family. Right. You basically could find everything there that you knew was going to, uh, not have any artificial junk in it and be the best for you. But we had to make a separate trip to a pet store to get the best quality pet food. We didn't feel what they were carrying in the store at Whole Foods at the time was of the quality we'd expect for, for our pets or want for our pets. We're going to make a separate trip to that pet store. So we asked ourselves, why is that? Why can't we just make a single trip to a Whole Foods or any grocery store and get the best quality food, treats, supplements for our pets there? And that led us down the path of really just kind of learning about the industry and seeing what was there and deciding, you know what? Nobody else is doing this. Why don't we do it? So we launched a pet food brand um, called I'm Loving You into the and launched it in, in Whole Foods to start and grew it to thousands of stores across the U.S. And part of what really validated for me that um, this was a great opportunity and we were on to something was my father-in-law is a retired veterinarian. And so I was able to really bounce a lot of ideas off of him. And what really kind of showed me was in talking to him about things that were at the cutting edge of called pet food and pet treats and pet supplementation was what are your clients? What are your, your, you know, your, your um, clients that are coming to you with their pets? What are they asking about with their food? And more and more we're asking about raw food diets at the time, about different things for their pets. And we ultimately decided there was a real opportunity to, to bring that to the broader market because we knew there was just more and more people asking about it. So, um, long story short, we, we launched that brand, built it up. We at the time had supplements. So 10 years ago, we had a lot of supplements for pets, supplements for cats. Um, and the market actually wasn't really there. Uh, we were food and treats. There was a lot more opportunity. Um, but fast forward to Zesty Paws, which um, it was created about five years ago as an opportunity where uh, supplementation for dogs and cats was just beginning to take hold. Mm -hmm. And it really can basically be uh, summarized as, as more and more people are taking supplements for themselves, for your overall health and wellness, for a condition. Once that kind of took hold in the broader market, they're more willing to do it for their pets. And we see that across everything where the trends in pet typically follow the trends in human. Mm -hmm. And so Zesty Paws really uh, grew with that, that well, demand, that trend in the marketplace. And um, I decided to come on board about a year ago and join the Zesty Paws team to really lead it into the broader market and kind of build it from there. So, um, you know, long way of saying, basically, I got into it because there was um, a really a need for better for you food and better for you supplementation, and health and wellness products. And I think what's kept me in the industry is just the, the ultimate benefit that you see you're providing to uh, both people and pets, right? The 
the way of keeping you know, the, what we provide in the way of a solution that uh, helps the pet lead a, lead a healthier life, help them uh, be happier. That directly translates to the health and well-being of their their parent as well, their pet, their human parents. So um, I think there's that overall impact and just what we say here at Zesty Paws is we're helping bring that zest for life back into both people and pets. And that, to be honest, is what uh, really keeps me excited and gets me up every day. Yeah. Well, the, isn't the tagline something like um, keeping your bestie zesty or something? I love that. <laughs> I, you got it really close. So, yeah, it's, uh, keep, keep your bestie feeling zesty. Oh, okay. So, so yeah. yeah. We really feel that's, that's at the core of who we are and what we do, right? Yeah. And that, to me, is um, – it's it's what our products do, but we also, you know, whether it's it's giving back to and making donations to um, animal shelters to help with adoptions, things like that. Those are all ways that, that we feel we're bringing the zest for life back to people or the pets. Ultimately, our products are going to help their you know pet parents bestie in the way of their their furry friend feel their their zestiest or feel their zesty self. So. It's interesting that you brought up the um, how like the dog trends or the, the the pet trends tend to kind of follow the human trends. Um, that's, cer- that's certainly something I've noticed having chatted to people in the pet food industry and and all sorts of stuff like and the and the health and well being industry um, pet industry. Um, yeah. It's almost like I feel like there's this momentum building in the in the the pet and dog space, which is like accelerating towards um, catching up to the human side when it comes to health and well-being for pets and people being more aware about what's in products, what they're giving their dogs. Um, would you agree with that? 100%. 100%. Yeah. It starts with, it starts with people will do it for themselves first, mm. right? And that's, again, 10 years ago, it was about better better for you eating, right? With humans, obviously, the growth of, of retailers like Whole Foods and the growth of the better for you human food movement directly then translated to better for you pet food, better for you pet treats, right? So the presence of the healthier stuff and the absence of the negative in those products. The same is really holding true for uh, functional supplements or functional nutrition pets for dogs and cats. Just the fact that more and more folks are taking it for themselves to help them feel better or help with specific condition. That's exactly what we're seeing really kind of carry forward and, and lift up the um, and be the trend that, that we're, uh, you know, really riding, if you will, with zesty paws. And I think that's just, you know, it's at the end of the day, people will do whatever they can for uh, their pets. And <laughs> it's, just, it's just great to see, right? You, you know that, um, you know, people originally thought kind of that they would get, the pets would get everything with their food that they needed. And they're realizing more and more they don't get everything they need with their food mm. right themselves. And they want supplements. So the same holds true for your pet. Mm. Um, so I wanted to talk a little bit more about CBD. So CBD isn't something that Zesty Paws currently has in your product line, but you're, you've, you've got a new line coming out later in the year. But I think um, CBD is one of those trends that I guess we, we touched on just then, um, which is a lot of people are hearing about. I'm certainly one that I've heard a lot about CBD for pets, uh, but I don't yeah. really know exactly what it is and what it can do. So what 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 is CBD for pets, and um, how would you explain that to someone that's not not quite sure about it? Yeah, well, it's still it's still emerging here in the U.S. Right, mm-hmm. it really is at the very forefront, and um, you know, it's one of those that while it's it's being talked a lot about and being discussed a lot, um, it's still kind of unclear. Uh, really, again, for the reasons you bring up of like why why your pet needs, et cetera, but more and more people are are looking to it for a number of different reasons, right? Number one, um, all the same reasons that CBD has really taken hold in the, the human market are similar reasons in the pet market people are looking to it. So whether it's for uh, relaxation, so for calming, for anxiety, which uh, most folks who have pets realize that you know there are a lot of breeds out there that do have anxiety issues, whether it's um, because they're getting older or because of thunder, lightning, things like that that can cause anxiety. CBD has been has been shown over again, you know, over and over to really benefit those types of dogs, and uh, also for things like inflammation. So if your dog is suffering from arthritis, it's exactly why a lot of people are using CBD. Same holds true for your pet. So we're seeing a lot of it around the hip and joint, uh, again around the calming. These are all conditions or or functions that we have current solutions for in, in the Zesty Paws line. Whether it's our mobility for hip and joint, 
whether it's um, our calming to help relieve anxiety and stress. But CBD is an ingredient that has some of these benefits that ultimately are beyond what currently you know, certain ingredients can deliver. And that's why we're looking to it as a real opportunity is that the cannabinoids and, and what you deliver with the CBD really do have a lot of proven benefits for both humans and pets. We're really excited about it. And again, it's just an emerging opportunity within the industry. There's not a lot of brands doing it today. And Sessie Paws really aims to be one of the first to deliver it from a pet brand for uh, the pet market. You see some of the human CBD brands have launched things for pets, but um, we believe that Zesty Paws as a, as a brand for pets is really going to break through in that, in that market. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, and I'm sure, there's, I'm sure there's lots and lots of dog owners out there that yes. um, would want to solve anxiety and joint issues. I think they're probably two of the most prominent issues that people face in the modern age of dog, uh, owning a dog, actually, especially with apartment living and things like that. Anxiety is, is, is prevalent, um, separation anxiety and, and things like that. Um, yeah, with, with CBD, I guess if I was thinking about getting a CBD oil or, or CBD supplement for my dog, what should I ask my vet? What should I, what kind of questions should I be thinking about before going down that road? Yeah, it's a great question. I mean, we, we say that basically you always want to, um, look to be, you know, talk to your vet first before you ultimately, um, you know, go there, right. And you're going to want to talk about. A um, couple different things like the safety, obviously. So, you know, feel free to definitely ask the vet about overall their perspective and, and their, you know, perspective on the safety of it. I think the dosage is a really important run, right? To understand the dosage for whatever the condition is that you're interested in it for. Hmm. Um, I think it's it's always good just to kind of get their perspective on, you know, what they think about it as far as um, the right amount, what they should be looking for, because there is a lot of, I guess, lack of knowledge out in the market today from pet parents about, is it right for my pet? Can I give it to them? And I think what Zesty Paws aims to do and many in the industry are trying to do is really educate. You know, how do we educate pet parents more and more about what is the right dosage of CBD? Because it is one of those things that it's not and just giving more of it doesn't necessarily do well for you nor for your pet. You've got to give the right amount. So we really aim to both educate and inform, but also um, you know, really just bring clarity to the overall CBD market around why this is great for your pet. And I think your vet can play, you know, a key role. I think a lot of vets today are still like consumers learning about it, um, but it is becoming more widely accepted in the, in the veterinarian market as well as in just the overall, overall market. So you mentioned like, I guess, doing some research and speaking to a vet is naturally a good place to do that. But is there any third party resources that you're aware of where people can find more information, I guess? Is it something that Zesty Paws will be actively doing when you release your CBD line is providing this type of information for owners? Yes, for sure. So I think that's ultimately, you know, really the goal is to get um, the information out there, right? We see Zesty Paws as a platform for education, awareness, and providing a solution for pet parents. So, you know, we aim to get the word out there, but it's not going to be just us. I think a lot of, a lot of the CBD um, human brands, if you will, have done a great job in, in, in working towards educating more and more people about the benefits of CBD. I think in conjunction with them, we're going to be able to really get the word out there. So we have partnered with one of the leading CBD brands in the U.S. Um, and really in the world to, to really educate. So really core to Zesty Paws is we always ensure that we have a, a branded ingredient or branded ingredients in our product. What we mean by that is these are not brands that SP Paws own. These are recognized brands of the functional ingredients. The same goes, it holds true for, for CBD. So we partnered with CB Distillery, uh, which in the U.S. And, and again, more broadly speaking, is a very well-known brand. Um, and again, they're at the forefront of the research, at the forefront of providing kind of that consumer education. We're able to leverage a lot from what they do to really then bring that to the pet market because our zesty paws for pet parents is extremely well known and obviously by bringing in some of that that education that knowledge from cbd distillery around cbd we know that we can better inform pet parents about the benefits and the usage of of truly this amazing ingredient going forward so it sounds like cbd distillery is is a resource place that people could go that brand would be a good place to go as well to learn yeah, more about cbd 
Yeah, what we're going to do, we're going to leverage a lot of the info that they provide and share with us, right, and kind of our partnership, hmm. um, and just bring that to the Zesty Paws website where we're going to be providing that. But then, you know, through e through different e-commerce platforms that we sell our brand, we'll be doing a lot of education on those as well. You know, and I do see, I see an opportunity through just the advertising, the different things that we do to bring this to the broader market is really not just an opportunity to say Zesty Paws, you know, here's our CBD line, but really to actually educate consumers mm -hmm. about why they need it, how this benefits their, um, their companion animals. So there's going to be a lot more coming in that, you know, we're just getting started around it. Um, and I think Zesty Paws really stands to be at the forefront of, of providing that education, just like the brand has done for the different areas that we, um, in the different conditions and solutions that we provide today is, is how do we educate the consumer that is in a, in a way that's both informative, engaging, but also inspirational. So those are some of the key aspects that we're looking at. Yeah, I think it's so important, the education aspect from your from a branding point of view, just because um, as, a, as a potential you know, um, buyer of the product, as a dog owner and all the people that are listening to the show, I mean, I want to know about things that I'm giving to my dog. I won't just, you know, randomly give my dog anything that, off the shelf. I want to look into the ingredients. I want to look into the background. So I guess supplements yep. is, is a fairly new space and CBD oil is a very new space for dog owners. Um, yeah, so just, I guess, doing that research is so important. So having that, that stuff available would be, would be super helpful, yeah. And you bring up a good point, which is for us, we felt that we could source a generic CBD and do that, but by actually bringing in a known brand of CBD that gives consumers the trust, but also the ability to go look and say, where does this CBD come from? Mm. Let me understand the research behind it. And we think that partnership with CBD Distillery is gonna be so instrumental to the education and the trust and just the overall awareness for it. But I think if, if I'm a consumer, I'm a pet parent, I just have no idea about CBD, and the fact that I can then go to a very well-known brand site and learn about it, it's going to really be beneficial for the market. Because, again, I think this is all, we're in such the early innings, if you will, of CBD for pets that education is going to be very paramount. I think trust is a key player there. And we know that Zesty Paws is a trusted brand. So let us partner with one of the most trusted brands in CBD, the CBD distillery, and that combined will lead to more trust, more awareness, and more education for the pet parents out there today. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Definitely giving me more confidence in in what you guys are doing with CBD. But um, what what are what are some examples of CBD products? Like, how would it be consumed by the dog? Is it an oil that you put on their food? Yeah. Is it a tablet, or is there a range of things you can do? That's a good question. So today, the the market's kind of broken up into four or so types of products around CBD. Right. So you've got tinctures, which are kind of the drops, and and that's very very well known in the human market, but it also is in the pet market today. Uh, you do have edibles so that could be in the form of some sort of treat right, for pets, just like you have edibles in the human market for CBD. Um, and then you've got just a couple of different types. You have capsules and things like that. So the biggest today is tinctures for pets. The biggest growth opportunity, this is research from the Brightfield Group, really does a lot of research around CBD in the, broader, in the worldwide market, so in the U.S. market. Um, over the next five years, the largest growth opportunity they project is around edibles. Um, if you think about it, that's where Zesty Paws really plays and has made its biggest impact is how do you deliver functional supplements, nutritional supplements for your pet in a form that your pet loves. Hmm. And with Zesty Paws, it's really in a treat-like form. And so, you know, really as we look going forward, we see the opportunity is how do I give my pet CBD that helps their uh, hips and joints that helps them relax, helps them sleep, um, that they love to actually eat. That's going to be the key. And so we see really the opportunity is, again, around uh, the soft chew format that we have today, bringing that to the broader market. Um, again, in a way that you that you love giving to your pet because they get so excited to have it versus something that feels like a chore for you and uh, feels like a chore for your pet to have to take. So that's kind of where we see it. There are some other things out there where it's topicals for pets. You know, that's not an area that we really uh, look to with Zesty Paws and we don't see that as really the, the bigger usage of it, but there are some of that as well. So I think it's again around the tinctures, the, the edibles, and again, really with the, 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 the edible market, the soft chew market is the one that Zesty Paws is gonna be looking to play in. 
Yeah, just as you were saying that, I was thinking about my own experience and um, it's just so much easier giving your dog like an edible uh, medication, which they have regularly, like for example, the tick and flea tablet that we give our dog compared to like, you know, a prescribed pill, which you need to break down and put in something else. Like it's just, yes. it's a different mindset. And, and obviously it's easier when your dog's excited to get medication and it makes it a lot easier. Um, yeah. How, how often are you giving a, a CBD supplement to a dog? Is this like a daily supplement or is it, a, you know, a, a short period of time that you do it or yeah, I'm not sure. <laughs> it, it totally depends on how you're going to use it, right? So if you think about the actual use cases and mm. you think about why a pet would need CBD. So if it's for something around calming, that can be more on a case by case basis. So if ultimately your pet is having anxiety, having stress because of a thunderstorm, because of a car ride, uh, then I think in that case, right, you're going to use it when that, that situation comes up. In the case of hip and joint care, so arthritis and, and overall just care for inflammation, that's a daily regimen. And that's just like the current supplements you give to your pet for those, you're going to be looking to give this on a daily basis. And I think the same from the human market really translates over. It, it depends on what the use case is for it. But CBD on a daily basis, you know, we're going to have on our products clear dosage about what you want to give your pet, how often you want to give it to your pet. But again, it comes back to really what's the use case. You know, it also can help with, uh, with certain pets that have um, difficult time, you know, maybe they don't want to eat, right? So there's a lot of pets out there that uh, just have appetite issues and ultimately, you know, CBD can really help to stimulate that. So that again can be on a daily basis. So I think it does depend on what the use case is, but uh, we see a lot more opportunity for it on a daily basis for certain um, conditions that we know pets are facing. And again, CBD has a lot of different applications and a lot of different benefits for pets, just like it does for humans. Cool. Thanks for sharing that. I mean, I think if I had to summarize everything we've discussed about CBD, I would say for, an, for a dog owner that's thinking about using CBD as a supplement for their dog or, or even just researching it, start with that education piece, do some research into, I guess, CBD oil in general um, and get to understand what that looks like and what, what benefits there are. And then when you move down the, the next stage, you know, speak to your vet, look into to the businesses like Sesti Paws when you guys bring out your line and and yep. just make sure that you're on you you understand what you're putting into your pet's body, but also um, look at it as, as an alternate treatment for you know things like joint issues and anxiety and and all these things that you might be uh, struggling with. Yeah, I think that's a, you summed it up better than I could. So <laughs> I'm not sure about that, but <laughs> um, so just just quickly to round things out, tell me a bit more about Zesty Paws in general. I mean, I love your brand. It's got a huge yeah. amount of personality, which I think is huge for um, you know, a, a dog brand because everyone relates, you know, um, large personalities for their dogs, yeah. I think. So what is it about Zesty Paws, which is unique and interesting for people to find out about? Yeah, great question. So, I mean, at the end of the day, I kind of summed up, right, we're Zesty Paws is on a mission to enable a zest for life, right? And we do that in both people and pets. And we do that by keeping your, like I said, keeping your bestie feeling zesty through through the supplements, right? In a fun way, a way that doesn't feel like um, it's something you hate doing every day. You love to give uh, your your dog or your cat these functional soft shoes because you know they're gonna love them. And Zesty Paws is really about kind of a couple different core differentiators. Number one is all of our products have a proven branded ingredient that's recognized by consumers and has the, the, the information behind it to validate what it you know, the benefits. So uh, that's a that's a big key for us. And as I mentioned with the CBD line, we'll have the CBD distillery branded CBD that we're using in it. The second is that is the thousands of five star reviews that we have. So Pepsi Pause was started online on Amazon as well as on Chewy.com. And the reviews and the validation that we have really give consumers, give pet parents the the confidence in the products that we're that we're ultimately providing to them. Uh, and then lastly is really around the fun, approachable brand that's fun for people and fun for pets. So if you look at our branding, right, most most of the kind of legacy brands within pet supplements, as we look at it, we're a little bit clinical in how they looked, right? Because that's kind of where the human supplement market was. It was clinical. Um, it looked almost like something you get at the doctor's office or in this case, the vet's office. And we said, look, this is 
at the end of the day, pets, dogs and cats are fun. People, the, what's at the core there is the, the bond of love and the bond of kind of and the playfulness they bring to your life and you bring to their life. And we wanted the brand to reflect that. And so if you look at the branding today, it's bright, it's vibrant, uh, it's a little bit whimsical and, and mm. whatever it's some of the things it does. And we feel that's got to reflect that that passion you have for your pet and you know, it makes it something that you're excited to, to, to go after. So we really do feel the branding and the, the look and the feel is something that separates Dusty Paws and uh, really makes it stand out through, again, those vibrant colors and the vibrant kind of design that we have out there. So um, and I'd say last is kind of what you're seeing with we talk about CBD is how do we stay at the forefront of what's best for for your pet? And so we aim to really you know, bring that educational platform and that that information to consumers. So so you don't have to spend hours researching on your own about these things. We're going to try and distill it down in a simple, easy to understand way that really makes it more informative and ultimately provides a solution that's a little bit clear as to why you would need this and how you're going to administer it for your pet. So I think that that clarity and that um, that kind of education piece is another big aspect of what really allows Zesty Paws, Zesty Paws to stand out from the rest out there. Yeah, it's funny you, you mentioned the brand and um, your website and everything like that because I it sounds a bit cheesy, but I personally enjoyed you know looking on your website. There's so much great information about each of your products, which educates people. Um, but it's just like it's a fun website as well. It's a fun brand to to experience. Um, you've got all the characters for the team uh, and everything about it for me. Just it, 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 as you said, it kind of made me happy about the experience yeah. I was going to have with you. It made me un, like um, almost relate it to my my um, relationship with my dog in a way. Uh, which is so you've done a great job with all of that. <laughs> oh, thank you. That's uh, you honestly summed it up perfectly. It's exactly what we hope for it to do, and I think. Just the fact that it reflects how people feel about their dog, how they mm. feel about their cat, just that that excitement that you know their their companion brings to them on a daily basis is exactly what we are hoping that the brand brings to you as well. So, so thank you for that. That's okay. Uh, so, is that the best place to, for people to to find out more? Zestypaws.com, or is there other places they can go as well? Yeah, you can find us on. Uh, I mean, Zestypaws.com is definitely the best place, right? Um, you also can find us on Instagram. So we're, we're on Instagram with Zesty Paws. And I think that's the best place to sort of uh, hear the voice of Zesty Paws on a regular basis and kind of see what we're about and engage with the brand. But as far as information goes, really learning about the products and the brand, definitely ZestyPaws.com is the best place to go. Perfect. Well, I'll share the Instagram and ZestyPaws.com in the show notes and everywhere else that we're sharing the show. Um, Steve, thanks so much for coming on the dog show today. I've really enjoyed the chat. I've learned a huge amount about CBD oil and everything to do with Zesty Paws. So I really appreciate your time. No, my pleasure, Will. Thanks for having me on. Really enjoyed it. And um, yeah, kudos on the great show. Cool. Uh, thanks again. Appreciate that. Thank you.